Hello traders, and welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris episode. Today's talk is going to revolve around the Chaikin Money Flow Index, and at the end of all of this, you'll know exactly what it is and whether or not it's worth investigating and using on your paper trading account to get ready to go live with. It's an indicator that's been with us since the 1980s and helps us to better understand the relationship between accumulation and distribution in the market. It's a very powerful tool when used correctly, so let's dive in and learn about the Chaikin Money Flow Index. The Chaikin Money Flow Indicator is a mouthful to say and we'll often refer to it as the CMF. But the CMF is an indicator that gauges the buying, otherwise known as accumulation pressure, against the selling, otherwise known as distribution pressure, of a particular security over a particular period. Often compared with other technical indicators like the on balance volume, which some traders call the OBV, and the Money Flow Index, the MFI, the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator is a very popular volume weighted oscillator. So let's start off by taking a look at how it might look on any real given trading platform. We're going to have a line that's going to go through the center of the chart. And mind you, this check and money flow indicator will always be displayed below your price charts themselves and not directly over it. Because naturally, it is an oscillator and it is going to oscillate across a zero line, which is where we see this dotted line on the center here. It doesn't matter what color this line is. The general concept is with the check and money flow, we have a zero line and we're oscillating between a positive one and a negative one. The reads that are above zero, as you might imagine, are indicative of buying pressure. And the reads that are below the zero line or in the negatives, those are indicative of mounting selling pressure. Another way to word that is when we're above the zero line, we're looking at accumulation and progress. And when we're below the zero line, we're looking at distribution and progress. As traders look at this, there's all kinds of ways that they can use this information to give themselves a better read over the market. An example of one way a trader might use the CMF to get a better read or some insight about what's going on in the market is to use the CMF for confirmation from price action breakouts. What I mean by that is if we find a resistance in the market on the price action charts themselves, we're looking at our candlesticks and we found resistance. Normally, when price finally trades above an area of resistance, a lot of traders will jump in to go long. They'll anticipate price to move upwards from breaking that area of resistance. A trader that wants to be a bit more cautious can use the CMF to wait for the CMF itself to cross above zero after that price action breakout has occurred in order to go long. They're using the CMF as an added layer of a bullish confirmation to give them that bullish trigger. A secondary way that traders will use the CMF is to use it to look for price divergence with the CMF itself. So when price action, for example, is making lower lows and going into oversold territories on the price action chart, if the CMF is not doing the same and it's actually marking higher lows, you can consider this a bullish signal or many traders will consider this a bullish signal and look for an opportunity to buy. The exact opposite would hold true. If price action itself is moving higher, but the CMF has switched and now the CMF is actually actually marking lower highs, we could look at this as an opportunity to sell. And the third and final way that most traders will use the CMF is by using it to wait for crossovers beyond the zero line in either direction and look for an opportunity at that time for the respective direction. We call this a crossover trade. So as the CMF falls below the zero line and trades below it for some time, what we're waiting for is the opportunity when it crosses back above. When the trading price of the CMF itself is now trading above the zero line, we're looking for an opportunity to go long in the market as long as we can confirm that with outside price action information. If price has been trading above the zero line and then falls and begins trading below at that crossover period, we would be looking for outside layers of confirmation for us to trigger a short for a short term trade. The CMF is often compared with other indicators that are used for monitoring money flows and momentum, such as the on-balance volume, which traders refer to as the OBV, and that's what we have displayed here. 
The OBV typically follows a security's trajectory, and when a positive or negative divergence occurs, it's usually a sign for an investor to make a move. Now, the OBV and the CMF differ in the sense that the OBV measures based on the difference in closing prices across multiple days, where the CMF measures the closing price of each trading day. Some traders will tell you that the OBV will produce more false signals than the CMF because the OBV is a leading indicator, meaning it's trying to provide predictions, but it doesn't offer much information regarding what has actually occurred in terms of the signals that it's sending out. Another indicator that often gets compared with the CMF oscillator is the money flow index itself, often referred to as the MFI, which can you blame anybody? It's money flow index versus shaken money flow. Let's get real. The MFI is a momentum indicator that gauges the flow of money into and out of a security, however. The money flow index is significantly different from the CMF in practical use because it utilizes volume and recent price action to measure momentum. In many respects, it resembles the relative strength index, which we refer to as the RSI. Normally, key levels to observe on the MFI are 80 and 20. If the index is higher than 80, it typically suggests that the market is overbought and a drawdown could be expected. In contrast, if an MFI reading falls below 20, it indicates that the market is oversold and that a rebound might be likely. Just like any technical indicator, the CMF itself also has pros and cons. One of its primary advantages is that it helps investors confirm a trend's strength and its breakout direction. Furthermore, traders can clearly see the divergence between the security price and the CMF itself, allowing them to time their entry and exit moves usually quite comfortably. Since it's a momentum oscillator, the CMF is most efficient in trending markets, where it lets traders measure a trend's strength strength and direction. When a trend strength fades, that loss is reflected in the CMF as a divergence, suggesting that a trend reversal is imminent. Among the key disadvantages on the other side of the coin is that it does have the opportunity to generate false signals. There are times where you will see the CMF cross the zero line and then go right back down underneath. Because of this reason, traders will usually use other layers of confirmation or wait for the CMF read itself to be five points ahead of the zero line before they use it as a breakout or crossover type signal. So to something up. The CMF indicator is going to give us reads of net buying pressure when the read is above that zero line, and it's going to give us a read of net selling pressure when the read is below the zero line. It's up to you to decide how to use the information that you're getting from the CMF, but one thing is certain, that information can absolutely be valuable. Good luck using the CMF indicator, and I'll see you on the other side. Bzzz.